Hello and welcome to this edition of the Angels and Destiny show. Why is this show called this, you may ask? So I'll tell you, accept me in the vein of messenger and accept me in the of destiny is to make firm establish. So my guests and I bring you messages to establish what you need to know in the present. And also I like working with angels and the calmness they bring. Now, in a moment, I will introduce to my wonderful guest, Lois Wag but Wagner. But before that, I'd like to say thank you so much for watching the show live at a later date, as it means a lot to me to connect with like-minded women. Now, if you've never met me before, then my name is Ray, and I love to help women to crossroads in their life, heal their past, create their future, and transform their present, so they can take charge of their destiny in the here and now. I'm the founder of Radiant Angel Energy, and I use angelic Reiki, future life progression, past life regression, guided meditation, angel oracle cards, and hypnosis to help women, women who feel lost get clear on their reason for being here. Now, each episode of the show will cover various themes of your journey, a mini guide to meditation, angel card reading, with the wisdom of my wonderful guests, like today's guest, Lois Wagner, who will be sharing how you can go from fear to forgiveness to freedom. Now, Lois Wagner is based in Johannesburg, South Africa, and is an accomplished speaker, storyteller, mentor, inspirer, learner facilitator, and empowering coach, who helps you lower your guard and open your heart to find the light. Lois will lead you out of the darkness as she moves you from victim through survivor to thriver and beyond to freedom after facing a life or business challenge or adversity. Lois has faced many crossroads and after healing her past created a new future, Smile with Lois. She'll be sharing events and lessons from her own story, moving through fear into forgiveness to freedom and into the light. Lois will share her smile with us as she takes us on a journey of healing to freedom with testimonials such as Lois has a very strong imagination index with which she can unfold a very difficult topic in a very symp sympathetically easy way. And I would not hesitate to recommend Lois for a role that requires a dedicated knowledge and well-rounded individual. The coach in her always shines as she endeavours to assist others in unlocking their potential. So without further delay, hello Lois and welcome to the Ancient Destiny Show. How are you today? Hi Ray, I'm doing well, thank you. And you? Yes, not too bad. So before we get into the fascinating conversation, I want to remind you that you can also ask questions, leave comments, as both Lois and I want to be part of this conversation. So please don't be shy. So Lois, why don't you tell us more about yourself, your journey, and how we can go from fear to forgiveness to freedom? Sure. Well, it's a long story. It's a long journey. Uh, I was uh, working one night in my little printing business in my very secure courtyard, and I was brutally attacked, raped, and left for dead. And uh, yeah, it was <laughs> quite a journey. And, you know, as a result of my experiences, I've developed a model that takes you from that first fear from that first victimhood. So whether it's something as dramatic as, as my experience or whether it's a, a, a something less traumatic, although I think your trauma is bad for you regardless of what it actually is, you tend to become a victim first. Your first reaction is to become a victim. And, and a victim is when you're depressed, you're angry, you hate, and you're filled with all those negative emotions. Mm -hmm. So yes, I was a victim. And then I became an activist. <laughs> and I wanted to change the world. <laughs> uh, this, this happened to me long before the Me Too movement. Uh, nobody spoke about uh, this kind of topic in polite circles. Uh, and it was in the time in South Africa when we were coming out of apartheid and we were designing a new constitution and they were asking for public submissions. So it was a great opportunity for me. So there was one of my crossroads was to say, do I stay quiet because you don't, you don't talk about these things or do I go out and see if I can change the world? So I became an activist out to change the world and I lobbied and, and got petitions and whatever I could to to make changes to the constitution and that's when you become a survivor when you move out of the victim mode into the survivor mode 
And the survivor, the word survivor for me means struggle. It's still a struggle. You're still fighting those emotions. Sometimes you fall back into the negative victim mode. But if you, you're getting yourself back into some kind of a meaningful life. And it takes resilience to do that. So resilience is very, very important to develop your resilience. Yeah, so then I became a survivor and I was a survivor for some years. And then you develop grit. And that was the next crossroads for me. Now what do I do? I lost the business that I was in um, as a result of, of the rape. My biz, I didn't want to be there anymore. No. And then to add fuel to fire, my business partner betrayed me and put the business into liquidation and I lost everything. I went into deep financial debt. Uh, and so this was the next crossroads. What do I do with my life? And so that's where grit comes in. And your grit is your perseverance and your passion and your, uh, your persistence to keep going forward. And I did that and I went back into the corporate world and I became a thriver. So thriving is when you, you achieve some level of success. And then it's the next crossroads. <laughs> so I've actually reinvented myself many, many times <laughs> as we go through these crossroads. Uh, but you develop a growth mindset or even a benefit mindset. And that is where you start saying, so what have I learned from this experience? Where has this brought me to? And what can I do to give back? And how can I change and support other people? You develop the growth mindset and you start giving back. You start sharing your story or, or supporting or advising or guiding people. And then the final step for me, the one that leads you to freedom is the most important. And that is forgiveness. So I forgave my business partner for betraying me and I forgave the rapist. Wow, that's a pretty big thing to, to do. Yeah. So I focus a lot on forgiveness because I really believe that is the ultimate freedom if you can forgive. And not only the perpetrator or the person or situation that hurt you, but forgiving yourself as well. Yeah, yeah, that, that's something I tend to um, say a lot to, to my clients um, and and that and that and that's one of the the two hardest things I think in the whole world are um, loving yourself completely and forgiving yourself and others. I, I, I always say they are the most two hardest things, but the most two important things in life that you can actually do. And you know, forgiveness is actually that not not that difficult. You can't forgive when you're in that victim mode. It's impossible because you're still filled with hatred and fear and anger and all those emotions. And you can't forgive in, in the struggle survivor mode either because you're trying to survive. You're trying to get your life back together. So you can't think about anything other than just putting the pieces back together. So forgiveness is easy at the right time. So yeah. when when you're ready for it. And each person will be ready for it at a different stage, at a different phase. Um, each person's journey is unique to themselves. So you can't compare your journey to anybody else's journey, although you do go through all of those phases. Yeah. So, um, I mean, did you have any help when you, when you were doing this or did you have to do it all by yourself? I did it mostly by myself. Um, it was prompted by a friend uh, it, it's quite a funny story because I was um, I left South Africa and I was living in the Middle East and I was coming home for my first holiday and I don't know it was it was 14 years after I was raped the, the, the rapist had been given a 25 year sentence and I never thought about it terribly much and I was going home and I just thought I wonder if he's still in prison and so I contacted the authorities and they wrote to me and they said, he's due for parole the day after I arrived in South Africa. I just thought, wow, that is just too much of a coincidence. And the law in South Africa had just changed the previous year, allowing victims of, they call them victims, allowing victims of serious crime to attend parole hearings. Hello. So I was the first person in South Africa oh, to wow. 
then a parole hearing after the law changed. So I was just chatting to friends before I left the Middle East and uh, they said, what are you going to do? Why are you going to the parole hearing? And I said, I don't know. <laughs> I'm allowed to go, so I'm going. <laughs> and everyone advised me not to go. And one friend said, yes, you must go and you must forgive him. What? Don't be silly. I'm not going to forgive him. He ruined my life. And uh, I thought about it and I did some research on the internet. And so, yeah, I pretty much prepared it on my own with help from Mr. Google. Yeah, yeah. You see, see, Google can 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 help can help sometimes. Um, so, 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 what sort of things did did you look on Google? I mean, did you? Because um, I know there was um, the Auschwitz survivor, wasn't there? One of the two sisters who was experimented on, who actually at the Nuremberg trials, she actually went and forgave her, um, the guy who did the experiments, didn't she? Yeah, there's been a lot of forgiveness. Uh, I, I don't think I Googled too much about what other people had done. I just Googled how to forgive. <laughs> um, and uh, I, des I, I followed a particular site and I sort of created my, my process around that. I have subsequently refined it dramatically because what I found was that it was too complex and it was too hard for looting and the, 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 nobody in the room understood anything except me. <laughs> <laughs> So I've made it a lot simpler and easier to manage. <laughs> oh, that, 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 that's, that's good that it's, it's made simpler for, for, for other people. So you said that um, obviously that um, obviously yours was traumatic and some people are, um, you know, is very, very traumatic. But what are some of the things if it's not so traumatic that people might have issues with? Well, it could be, you know, you overlooked for a promotion in your job. You know, that's traumatic. you expecting to get a promotion and it doesn't happen. Uh, so there, there's thousands of things. It could, be, it could be a serious one, like the death of a loved one. It could be an accident. Your car get written, got written off in an accident. So there are millions of things um, that, that, and you go through the same process. Sometimes it's quick because the, the incident is not that serious. Uh, and depending on the, the, the severity of it, it can take, for me, 14 years. Um, although I advise people to work through it quicker. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, now yeah. that I know what I know, <laughs> I, yeah, I could have done it a lot quicker than 14 years. <laughs> oh, but then if you had been about 14 years ago, you probably would have done it quicker. <laughs> Absolutely. Because <laughs> you, you would have been helping yourself do it because you knew what you were doing. Absolutely. So yeah, so it's each person, as I say, it's at their own pace. And I just don't advise you to hang around so long because, you know, I suffered for so many years. I even had psychosomatic back problems. Uh, I was bedridden for six months. And wow. there, was, there was nothing wrong with me. And it's a, as a direct result of unforgiveness. Because what happened was, because I was so out there changing the world and lobbying and going out telling everybody my story, everybody was saying to me, you're so brave, you're so strong. Look at me, I'm so brave, I'm so strong. And it was about two, maybe three years later, um, I couldn't get out of bed one morning, my leg just seized up on me went to doctors, had MRI scans. They said, no, no, I had to have a back operation. They operated, the operation failed, had to have another back operation, the operation failed. Uh, the, the surgeon, I used to be a keen scuba diver and hiker, and the surgeon said I would never do those things again because I could never carry anything on my back again. Anyway, I was bedridden. I went for lots of alternative therapies, and they all helped they all relieved the pain for for short periods of time but it didn't heal the problem and it was here yeah, once it was pointed out to me by my dear sister that I was not facing something that I was putting something behind me I was ignoring something putting it behind me and carrying it on my back until my back just said I can't take it anymore 
So when I started evaluating what that was, it was the fact that it was so nice to be weak. I didn't have to be strong for everybody anymore. Gosh, yeah. So why get better? Everybody was fetching and shopping and carrying and I could just be weak and pathetic and I didn't have to do those things. <laughs> and so that's just what it was. And uh, so I did a little bit of head work and I went for eight chiropractic treatments. And I did a five-day hike with a huge backpack on my back. Wow. So much for the doctor's diagnosis. Exactly. But that was just literally by your mindset um, that, 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 that changed, that had that, that major, major uh, miraculous change. <laughs> it was. It was all in the mind. <laughs> Yeah, we, we, you know, and, and it's amazing how much the mind, you know, can affect us with with every with everything we do, and that. So, so where does the smile come from? <laughs> well, when I went back into corporate business, uh, well, on and off, as I say, I've reinvented myself so many times. I went into corporate, and then I started a training business, and I went back into corporate, so in and out. Um, and then in the Middle East, I was working for a company. And then I reached the age of 64. And they said, they're not going to re renew my work visa anymore. I'm too old. So I had to come home, forced retirement, much to my disgust. <laughs> and, so, and so I thought, well, now I've got to reinvent myself again. And everyone says to me, you're always smiling. <laughs> and so... I, I thought, well, and that's what I do. I bring the smile back to other people by helping them through their process. So I looked at what I do and the storytelling, the, 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 the mentoring, the inspiring, the learning, and the empowering through coaching. So it was a nice acronym to explain what I do. And yeah, so I started my business using that to explain what I do. Oh, that's absolutely that's absolutely brilliant I just love that you know sort of like the smile and then it just all fitted fitted in perfectly together um for for, for, for what you do so do you just um, see people in person or do you work online as well well unfortunately at the moment it's only online <laughs> mm. um and and since I've um retired it was almost it happened just before COVID so I've been mostly online since I've been smiling <laughs> <So>. <laughs> that's brilliant and you found time to write a book as well well the book took 26 years to write oh okay um, I started the, the night I was raped. I started writing it I just had to get it out and so I kept a journal and the intention was, because I wanted to change the world, the intention was to publish it as my journal. But I never found a conclusion. <laughs> and it just going a while, a while, a while, a while. And eventually I thought, you can't publish it. It's boring. It's dull. It's Nobody wants to know about what I ate for lunch yesterday. And so I just lay the in gathering dust and then I thought well the conclusion was the forgiveness which was the conclusion but for some reason never got off the ground and now because I'm doing this work it's the right time and now also because because I'm doing this work I've added lessons into the book so the book is part journal part memoir part lessons so it's a self-help guide as well as a story uh, and so the, the time was right now because it, it just makes sense. Before it was just a memoir. So now it's, it's, it's got lessons. Oh, <laughs> so what kind of lessons have you managed to put in the book that people can do? Well, it's just moving through from survivor, from victim to survivor, thriver and beyond. So I give tips on, on how to manage the emotions when you're feeling really full of hate and anger. So there's just a couple of tips on that. Um, when it comes to the forgiveness, I've got a free downloadable checklist on forgiveness that you can download. So that's in the in the book, some of those tips. Uh, and then at the beginning of a book of the book is a little quiz. 
to um, test where you are, whether you're a victim, survivor, thriver, or free. So it's just a little bit of that, getting them involved in the process. Yeah, yeah, we, we, which, which makes, makes absolute sense. So, you know, is there a little tip or something that you could maybe share with people that are watching now? Um, you know, uh, it's kind of, I, I don't know, with, with what's going on at the moment, um, something that could, that could help could help them. At all. Absolutely. You know, whenever you go through any kind of upset or challenge or adversity, get a pen and paper, preferably pen and paper. You can do it on your computer, but uh, it, it works better if you write it. I can never read my writing after it, <laughs> so I have to do it on computer. Uh, but write. You can write it as a journal, or you can just write your emotions, write down what you are feeling at that moment, whatever it is, just get it out there. Two things happen when you write. It, well, a couple of things. One is it helps you remember if you want to go back to it later. The, the second thing is it's, it's very therapeutic. You're actually getting it off your chest. You're getting it out there. And then also when you get it out there, you're actually sharing it with the universe. And the universe takes some of that pain away. So writing is a very, very, very therapeutic thing. As I say, you can write it in any form, but just get it out there. One of my, my peers at the moment, he's just become a father and uh, we, we're in a writing group together. And he said that he's starting to write before he forgets the emotions that he is feeling as a result of becoming a new father. And uh, it, I think that's wonderful because even though that was a good thing, it's wonderful because you do forget those feelings and those emotions. Yeah. So get it down, whether you do it for yourself, whether you ever read it again, whether you do what I do and publish it eventually. It's so therapeutic to just write, get it out. So that's the one to, you know, COVID, oh, what's happening, how you feel being locked in lockdown, how, you know, what is happening inside of you. Get it out there, write it down. You know, maybe one day you'll read it to your grandchildren and say, you remember the days when we, we weren't allowed to leave our houses? <laughs> this is how we felt. So, and then the second thing is to share it, to share your story in some form, speaking, reading, uh, and you don't have to go public like I do, and I don't advise you unless you really have a reason to do it. Uh, but speak to somebody whether it's a therapist, whether it's a healer like yourself, whether it's your mother, your family, and if you don't have anybody, your dog or your cat, <laughs> just to get it out, to speak it out, again, sharing it with the universe, express what is happening, very, very therapeutic, very healing. And the mean, it doesn't even need to be your own pet, it could be a tree, a flower, a bird, Absolutely, absolutely. Just share it. <laughs> I like that. That they they that's a really good that's a really good um uh, tip there um for for people. I I think um is yeah get it get it written down get you know get it get it out there. So yeah, thank you so much much for that tip. So as you know, um I do uh, guide meditations and angel oracle cards and each week I like to ask my guests what they would like me to do. So Lois, would you like me to do a guided meditation or pull an uh, oracle card for you and the viewers watching? Oracle card. Okay, everyone always says oracle cards, can't think why, but I like using them. So anyway, that doesn't matter anyway. <laughs> so we just give them a quick cleanse and a bless. And of course, when I work and I do the cards, it's for what we need to know for our highest good at this moment in time. So I always work towards the present. So even though I work with past life stuff, it's if we um, heal the past life stuff, we can be fully present. And with the future stuff, um, if we know where our future is going, what's happening, then we don't worry about it. And we're fully in the present. So it's everything for what we need to know in the present. So what does Lois and everyone who's watching this need to know for their highest good this moment in time? Lois and everyone who's watching this need to know for their highest good this moment in time. Perfect. Fellow travellers, 
support is all around you. Wonderful. I mean, how yeah. perfect that that card has literally come out. Absolutely. And that's, and that's the one thing people must remember. They are not alone. You are not alone on your journey. There is somebody out there and not only one somebody, there are many people out there. Regardless of what it is you're experiencing, you will find some support group, some people who are there to support you. Yeah. And if not on the physical plane, then, you know, on the spiritual plane, the angelic realms, um, you know, you've, you've always got that guidance around you. You just have to tune into into it. So, so, you, so you've always got someone or something there um, all, all, all around you. So so I think, Lois, you know, th this is also saying to you, you know, you are you have got a support network and um, around you um uh, with you know and it's confirming that you do have that and not just physical but actually on the um spiritual and angelic realm as well i'm kind of, you know you've got a lot you've got a lot of um of energies actually supporting you at this time and trying to push you forward with what you're doing i feel it <laughs> yeah yeah um, and of course, to those watching, again, it's just a reminder that you have got that support network around you, whether it's physically um, or, or spiritually um, or, ang or angelically, um, that you've actually got that around there. So what's the feather? Well, it just flew into my room today. Oh, wow. And, that, and that's the sign of the angels. It is. Yeah, fe yeah feather feathers appearing. How amazing is that? You know, confirmation, confirmation. And you can actually ask that. Um, you know, if if you if you want, you know, you know, are my angels around me? You know, show me a sign, and they'll either throw a feather your way, a penny, um, a song will come on. Um, I know Robbie Williams' angel. You know, something will come along that will go. Ah, angels are with me now. And that. Uh, so, Lois, do you have any insights or thoughts to leave our viewers? Whatever emotion you're feeling as a result of your adversity, regardless of what it is, is acknowledge that, it, that emotion, accept that emotion. Don't just ignore it and say it'll go away. Don't brush it under the table because it will come back. It goes into the subconscious and it will come back when you least expect it. So acknowledge it. It's real. It's there for a reason. You know, if you're in denial, it's because you're not ready to face it. If you're angry, yes, you're allowed to be angry. Somebody hurt you. Something bad happened. You're allowed to have those emotions. Feel them. I've got a process that you work through to, to do it. But just feel it. Just don't hang in there too long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not too long. That that's that's the trick. So I hope everyone that you've enjoyed this and found um, and found it insightful. And the words of wisdom Lois has given you will help you further on your journey. So Lois, if people want to uh, connect with you and get your book, how do they do that? It's quite easy. Just Google "walking without skin." Um, it's on Amazon. Uh, my Facebook page is called Walking Without Skin and my web page is Walking Without Skin. So that's the easiest way. And you will find I've got a the free forgiveness checklist and I've got a free mojo guide, uh, how to get your mojo and keep happy. Uh, so there's a couple of freebies there for you. Oh, excellent and what I do is I'll post those um, links into the comments so that people can literally just um, click onto them um, and, and connect with you um, so of course if you have reached that crossroads in your life and you need help finding your destiny and taking charge of your life and getting clear on your path then I would I personally would love to be that guide for you please feel free to reach out and connect with me and we can arrange a free 20 to 30 minute video call to find out more about each other and how I can help you take charge of your destiny and of course the Angel Wings membership community is now open where you get the chance to grow with ascended masters archangels god goddesses and the community itself to help you spread your wings and soar and of course, if you sign up to my weekly newsletter on my website, you actually get a guided relaxation meditation to help you de-stress and also a couple of other three gifts. 
So thank you so much, Lois, for being on the show today. Um, and thank you so much to everyone watching. And I'd like to invite you to share this video, as I'm sure there are more women who feel lost and want to get clear on their destiny, just like you. And if you're watching this on my YouTube channel, then please do hit the um, subscribe and the bell to be notified of future um, shows. And what is that butterfly doing there? I just end off by saying fly free. Oh, I like it. I like it. I like it. <laughs> I like it. Thank you. So everyone, thank you so much for watching. Thank you again, Lois. And I will see you all again, same time, same place next week. Bye. Thank you, Ray. Bye.